In 1935, English chemists Basil Albert Adams and Eric Leighton Holmes introduced the first phenolic form of ion exchange resins. This phenolic formaldehyde product could be modified to create either cation resins using sulfonic groups or anion resin using amine groups. Together, these two new resins made it possible for the first time to demineralize water by ion exchange and the first commercial demineralizing plant was built in 1937. Between 1945 and 1947, extensive research was done and an organic polymer was discovered that led to the development of styrene devenyl benzene that ultimately was the breakthrough for present-day ion exchange technology. This polymer was a much stronger, more stable and less pH-sensitive material than the phenolic resins. These early advancements quickly evolved and development of ion-specific resins were produced that could target troublesome contaminants such as nitrate, sulfate, uranium, arsenic, tannin, and many others that could create health-related problems for domestic consumers. This innovation made the complete demineralization of water possible. Before going any further, we need to know what is ion exchange resin. Ion exchange resins is a cross-linked long-chain organic polymers micropores in nature carrying exchangeable ions. There are two types of ion exchange resins, which are cation exchange resin and an ion exchange resin. Cation exchange resin carries acidic functional group which are capable of exchanging the H plus ions with the treatment of dilute HCl. Meanwhile, an ion exchange resin carries basic functional groups um, which on treatment with dilute NaOH are capable of exchanging their OH- ions. So, how does it work? This process requires two towers of columns, which is an ion exchange column and an ion exchange column. First is the cation exchange column, which packed with cation exchange resins, which capable of exchanging H plus ions. The anion exchange column is packed with anion exchange resins, which capable of exchanging OH minus ions. First, raw water will enter cation exchange column. But before that, it's meant by raw water. Raw water is nothing but all the water sources collected in the reservoir. This water will contain all types of minerals in it. So let's consider that this raw water contains CaSO4 and NaCl. This compound will then pass through cation exchange resin, which cause cation in both compounds will go through some reaction with H plus ions and produce H2SO4 and HCl. Soon, H2SO4 and HCl compound will move to anion exchange column and pass through anion exchange resins which OH- ions will react with both compound and producing H2O or known as the deionized water. However, water may contain some dissolved gas which are further removed by passing it through the gasifier where it is heated and the escaping gas are removed by applying vacuum. One thing that everyone should know is that once there are no more H plus or OH minus ion, the ion exchange resins is already exhausted. Thus, in order for the ion exchange resin to be functioned again, the resin must be degenerated.
advantages of ion exchange demineralization technique is that it is very cost effective, which very little amount of energy is required, and regeneration of resins is very economical. If resins are maintained efficiently, they may last for many years before they have to be replaced. It is relatively inexpensive initial capital investments. Ion exchange demineralization technique is one of the most appropriate technologies to remove dissolved inorganic ions effectively, and it also can work well with low water pressure. Last but not least, it has the possibility to regenerate resin. Ion exchange demineralization also has its own disadvantages. First, ion exchange demineralization does not effectively remove bacteria or pyrogen. Ion exchange resins do not remove microorganisms like bacteria from the feed water but sometimes eat in the bacteria growth. The resin beds may accumulate organic matter which serves as a source of nutrient for continued growth of bacteria. When sterile water is required after the treatment, the demineralized water produced by the ion exchange treatment plant should be treated by heat, ultraviolet irradiations, or very fine filtration. Ion exchange resin bed can also be treated with disinfectant such as formaldehyde but not with heat or chlorine as they will damage the resin. Second, the process of regenerating the ion exchange bed will dump salt water into the environment because regenerations of acid and bases cost for disposal is high. The operation cost of the long term of required from acid base for regeneration is high. Fourth, it also may cause calcium sulfate falling. Sulfuric acid is one of the cheapest cation resins we generate and is widely used. Some water supplies contain a higher proportion of calcium, which on reaction with sulfuric acids form calcium sulfate. This falls the resin and blocks drain pipes with a build-up of scale. Under such circumstances, hydrochloric acid is used as a substitute. Furthermore, sediment can clog the exchange resins, nozzle, and orifice in softener and reduce regeneration effectiveness. To prevent sediment build-up, pre-treat water to remove the BDT sediment or particles of iron, manganese, or sulfur. Resins used in ion exchange can cause organic contaminations. The ion exchange resin itself can sometimes become the source of organic contaminations. The new ion exchange resins often has organic elements remaining in the resin beads after manufacturing. Such contaminations of the resins may be treated by passing the treated water through an ultrafiltration treatment plant. Lastly, ion exchange demineralizations may cause iron cooling. Feed water from the underground water bores has soluble iron in the form of ferrous iron. Small amounts of this ion is removed by the ion exchange softener. But if this feed water comes in contact with air before treatment, the ferrous ions are converted to ferric ions. This ferric ion precipitates as ferric hydroxide after reacting with water. This compound can clog the resin beads and affect the resin efficiency. This can even result in failure of the softener column. In conclusion, ion exchange demineralization is a well-suited drinking water treatment system for highly selective removal of specific contaminants. Ion exchange is the most appropriate technologies that are commonly be used to remove dissolved inorganic ions effectively for a drinking water treatment process. Although it does have limitation, however, it also has many qualities. Therefore, ion exchange methods have been increasingly used to produce drinking water nowadays. That is all about ion exchange demineralization system from us. We hope everyone will have a clear and better understanding now. Bye!